ora koutou. We thought we'd finish up by bringing you an example of um, Superu's role in evaluating cross-sector initiatives. And one of those at the moment is the Youth Mental Health Project. Um, this is a package of 26 initiatives that was launched in 2012. And it really came, from the, in, came out of the context of Sir Peter Gluckman's report on um, improving transitions in adolescence and reducing social and psychological problems during that time. Um, it Youth Mental Health Project focuses on, just checking the slides, sorry, yes, focuses on 12 to 19 year olds as I said and the, folk, the aims are to prevent the development of mental health issues, improve access to services and to reach young people in different settings, so in their homes, families, community, schools and in the online environment. So these are some of the um, initiatives, I'm not going to describe them all, but they really comprise a mixture of information, guidelines, reviews, training, therapy, supports and services. And there are four lead agencies, Ministry of Education, Te Puni Kōkiri, Ministry of Health and who did I leave out? Ministry for Social Development, sorry. Um, coming back to the cycle, the evaluation of the Youth Mental Health Project is really sitting in that creating evidence space. So the projects are underway with the 26 initiatives and this is an evaluation of, of the outcomes at that higher overall level. Um, so Superu's role in this is to evaluate the extent to which the project as a whole is achieving its outcomes or the intended outcomes. So the evaluation questions are up there. Really the main one is the first one up there. To what extent is the Youth Mental Health Project a comprehensive and coherent program? And are there gaps in the coverage? So the 26 initiatives, they have, there are various evaluations going on at that individual initiative level, but this is at the higher overall level. And then we're also looking at how, how well it's being implemented, what is being achieved, what are the outcomes and are they being achieved, does it represent value for money and then eventually the key question will be what do the Youth Mental Health Project results imply for future mental health policies and programs. So that's at the knowledge to action part. But of course there are several challenges with evaluating this kind of complex program. You've got obviously multiple initiatives, you've got multiple outcomes and you've got multiple settings. Okay, so given those circumstances, Superu have taken a, um, an approach that comprises different components. So the first part of the evaluation was the formative evaluation which came out um, this year. The data sources for this were largely the plans for each initiative and the documentation around initiatives and there were key informant interviews across agencies. Um, this evaluation focused on the design, governance and implementation of the project and the findings, the key findings are up there that found that the project was comp had comprehensive coverage. Um, it was on track to deliver outcomes, there's strong governance in place, but it also made some recommendations about the need for a better understanding of the theory of change, so of the outcomes and the mechanisms for achieving those outcomes that each of the projects had, and for consistent metrics across projects in order to evaluate overall effectiveness. And there was also a recommendation for better targeting of um, initiatives for Māori and Pacific young people. So these findings um, will be tested in the summative evaluation. Now, alongside that, a research summary was completed in 2015. Um, and that the key findings for this came in those four areas. So the principles, um, for example, a focus on risk and protective factors, um, the fact that a cross-sector approach was needed, which is fortunate because that's what the Youth Mental Health Project was, was a cross-sector approach. Um, the need for culturally appropriate interventions, 
um, particularly for Māori and Pacific young people, um, and the fact, particularly in the fact that they're more likely to face risk factors for mental health issues, and the importance of using a developmental framework, so of keeping in mind the needs and competencies of young people at different ages and for planning ahead as they go through um, adolescence. So the summative evaluation, or the outcome evaluation, is due next year, and the overarching objectives of that really sit at two levels. So you're looking at the overall effectiveness of the youth mental health project, but also looking at, at a methodological level at how best to um, evaluate multi-component responses that are addressing complex uh, issues and social issues. So in a way this um, piece of work is demonstrating evaluation methodology as much as it is coming up with <coughs> the specific findings. We've taken a very pragmatic developmental approach to the evaluation um, and to the data sources, so we're uh, collecting data from a range of sources. Um, sorry, I'll just go back. Yeah, that's right. There we are. Um, so our, we've taken a place-based approach. We've been taking six locations around the country and collecting data at different levels within those locations. So it's kind of a, um, a nested case study approach, if you like, where we're collecting data um, from individuals, families, schools, communities um, in those six locations. And then looking at the collective impact of, of the initiatives within those locations. Okay. So just to sum up, the, the evidence that's being created through this evaluation of a complex cross-sector project um, will inform dialogue and decisions about policies and programs to improve the mental health outcomes and well-being of New Zealand's young people. Thank you.